as we find out in the Sumer Archon Quest, knowledge is power. So today, I have a question. How much does Tivat know about the Traveler? The Traveler is such a statistical anomaly that when they went through in Azuma, each person there believed the Traveler was such a powerful entity to go against the Raiden Shogun or to fix the Vision Hunt Decree. Now, while their hopes were very much founded, it is important to consider that the Traveler themselves haven't necessarily been completely transparent about who or what they are. So today, welcome to the Why Does the Traveler Hide Their Identity? where I'm going to be diving into the Traveler as a character and this strange secrecy that they uphold as the unspoken enigma and alien of Tivat. Now, a quick disclaimer. The purpose of this video isn't to give answers, but to give more questions. I won't be going into any mind-boggling conclusions or final solid words unlike my other theories because the purpose of this video is to just open the conversation of the Traveler, to just notice the little parts of the Traveler's personality that Hoyo's been building up in the background. So this video is less of the theorizing side and more so the speculative side. But I really think that it's practically impossible for there to be any substantive answer. So let's begin. Before I can say why the Traveler hides their identity, I need to first contextualize what in the world I'm talking about. If you notice how the Traveler interacts with the people around them, they tend to keep people at an arm's distance by not really divulging much information about themselves. Most of the time, if a character knows information about the Traveler, it's through either their own power sets or abilities, their important figures that already have an inkling, or their trusted confidants. But even then, it seems that not all playable characters know the Traveler equally. For example, Amber, Sing Cho, and Chong Myun don't give any hint of knowing the deeper story of the Traveler in their interactions or voice lines. But Ayato actually asks the Traveler what happened to them before Tivat. While Yaimiko was asked by the Traveler about the unknown god that took away their sibling, Chong Li also seems to know that something happened to the sibling, meaning that the Traveler should have at least divulged information about them. The degree of which the characters know the Traveler very differently, so it's actually hard to say what kinds of information the Traveler keeps from Devot or if they're even intending to hide their identity in the first place. Since Genshin Impact is a playable character-heavy game in which the Traveler is essentially our eyes into the world, it should be pretty normal that the Traveler is a blank canvas. But the thing with Genshin Impact's protagonists is that they aren't. The Traveler has continuously tried to steer conversation away from themselves or simply withhold information from others. Not to mention, their nature as a quiet character, even in the context of the universe, leaves little room for discussion on their end. We have seen this in multiple scenes where the Traveler knows more than they let on, or that they've actively shushed Paimon for giving too much information. So what's happening here? Well, when discussing the Traveler's secrecy about their identity, we can separate this into four parts. Their name, their age, their origin, and their first entry into Devot. Let's start with the name. Here's a very fascinating thing that separates Genshin Impact's Aether and Lumine from other protagonists that are named by the player. Normally, when you name a protagonist in an RPG, the original name that is proposed by the canon creators doesn't exist in your playthrough. Think of Joker from Persona 5 who is never mentioned in the game as Ren Amamiya or Frisk of Undertale that is never Frisk. As far as the game is concerned, the name you gave the player character is the only name that exists. But contrast that with the Traveler. You can name the Traveler of your choosing to be anything you desire. And everyone, even Paimon, calls you by that name in Tivat. We know that this is the name that almost everyone knows the Traveler has because when you name Scaramouche the username that you use, he says that this is your name and that he's fine having the same name as you. Additionally, no other character in the game mentions the original names of the Traveler except each other. In the 1.4 Archon Quest, it is confirmed that the names Aether and Lumine exist within the context of the game, and that the name you choose for the Traveler is nothing short of a pseudonym. Now, the motivation that the Traveler has for keeping the original name a secret is unknown, as even Paimon, despite hearing the sibling refer to the Traveler by their original name, calls them by their pseudonym when they're in public. I wonder how the Tevatians feel that the Traveler has a real name like Aether or Lumine, but they just choose to call themselves VentiFucker25. Imagine what Wanderer would also feel if he found out your name isn't actually VentiFucker25. Okay, anyway, I digress, so it's just kind of funny to me. 
The next thing is the Traveler's Age. The Traveler's Age is actually not that well known to the public, and some characters go out of their way to call the character kid or underage. The Traveler themselves also never goes out of their way to correct anyone that assumes they're young. In the 1.4 Arkan Quest, Paimon was shocked when she found out that the Traveler lived through Conria 500 years ago. Playable characters like Kaya and Venti, for example, have called the Traveler underage in their voice lines and in the Mondstadt Arkan Quest respectively. But that doesn't mean that they don't know the real nature of the Traveler. Venti, for example, is aware that the Traveler comes from distant worlds and even hints that he has a vague idea that the Traveler is still concealing some important powers. Not to mention, there's this weird conversation about the Traveler's ability to drink versus choosing not to drink. We as an audience are aware that the Traveler is 500 years old plus just from the context of the entire game. But what about the characters themselves or the people they talk to? The Traveler has expressed several times that they don't drink. However, the Traveler has drunk before in the past. In Zhongli's voice line, Venti got the Traveler drunk once, which means that the Traveler could easily just not like alcohol similar to Diluc. We also have characters like Xiao and Scaramouche using words like mortal and human to define the Traveler, yet we know that the word mortal in Genshin Impact doesn't really have a lot of bearing considering that immortals can still degrade and erode with time. It simply means that they don't age. In conclusion, I highly doubt that most of the playable characters are even aware of the Traveler's age. I can see them being aware of the Traveler being from a different world because that seems to be common knowledge, but not that they're really, really, really old. But now for the more divine side, the side that defies Sevatian rules and standards. In the eyes of the people, the Traveler is already different and essentially a demigod. People are curious about their origins because it's a pretty known fact that the Traveler is able to manipulate the elements without a vision. This is most notable in the Inazuma Arkan quest. However, it's a mystery if the people of Tevat know that the Traveler is able to control multiple elements at once, or that they used to have wings, or that their initial element was pure white. But not everyone knows the true extent of the Traveler's powers. I also speculate that the Traveler can't exactly give the information about their powers if they want to because they're not really sure how it works. For example, in Albedo's story quest, the Traveler admitted that because they're new to this world, they're not really sure how their powers and their bodies reacted to the concept of elements. So it's possible that the Traveler isn't really hiding this part of themselves, but just has no real way of conveying such information to others. But what is a very well-guarded secret is their encounter with the Sustainer of Heavenly Principles. There are so few characters that I can confirm know that the Traveler has faced the Heavenly Principles. Namely, the Archons and Yaimiko considering they're the people the Traveler asked about in their respective Archon quests. However, most playable characters know that the Traveler is just looking for their sibling. So in conclusion, if you want to return to the question of how much does Tevat know about the Traveler, they know about their feats, their general appearance, and their abilities. However, their more divine side, or the side that we see in the opening cutscene, is only reserved for certain characters that are important to the Archon quests or to simply Paimon, which is why it's actually very fascinating to see how close the relationship of the Traveler is with Paimon and how much the Traveler actually trusts Paimon with almost all of the information about their past. Paimon being the Traveler's closest confidant is very heartwarming, considering the fact that Paimon and the Traveler's relationship is super close-knit when you'll read their voice lines. The Traveler confides in Paimon about other distant worlds, or fears and insecurities that they had in the past. So if there's one thing in Tevat that could be extracted of for information about the Traveler, it's definitely Paimon. Now we move on to the question of the title. Why does the Traveler hide their identity? Well, personally for me, I can think of two reasons. The first is that the Traveler sees no need in divulging this information. It's a simple, practical reason. Because the Traveler is so caught up in the events of the world, there is really no point in sitting down and just talking about themselves when everyone also seems content on pouring their own backstories into the mix. This is why we see that if there were reveals about the playable characters and the Travelers, most of them come from voice lines, the downtime between all of these wacky events. The Traveler seems content with just going through this world without really sharing their backstory with others and that's perfectly fine. Maybe the Traveler was just a very good listener and has been quite reserved in conversation unless they're absolutely needed. 
The second reason that I think the Traveler hesitates to really connect with other people, especially the new people from Tevat, is simply out of survival instinct. Albedo once said that it is a statistical anomaly that the Traveler's general makeup is inherently compatible with Tevat's world, especially since they're an outlander. And that's very much true. Imagine if the Traveler went to a world that was filled with giants or robots or just non-humanoid creatures. So think of it like this, there is no way that each of these worlds are all kind and benevolent. Heck, the first time the Traveler came to Devot, the world was burning away in the Cataclysm and they were determined to leave immediately. And when they did showcase their power or strength or status as an outlander, they were punished and sealed away. Something as powerful as your name could be valuable information, and if the wrong people caught wind of the Traveler's strength, such as the Fatui for example, the Traveler would have had an even bigger target painted on their back. Not to mention, if you slowly piece together the Traveler's attitude of Tivat, the Traveler is currently hesitant to stay. In the 1.4 Archon Quest, the Traveler expresses the want to leave after Dane mentions the incident with Conria, and after the Traveler reunites with the sibling. In the Aranara Quest, the Traveler is also hesitant when asked if they could stay in Sumeru for a while after they find their sibling. It's possible that the Traveler, despite all the great friends they've made along the way, still sees Tivat and its principles as a threat to their well-being. Besides, Tivat is one of many, many worlds, if they really have traveled the Celestial Atlas. To us, as a player, Tivat is great, but I wonder what the perspective of the Traveler is considering how taxing their stay in Tivat was for the past two to three years. But that's it for me today. If you're wondering why this video topic is a bit out there compared to my other videos, it's more so to fill that innate curiosity before the inevitable lore drop of 3.4. Oh boy, the calm before the storm. Also, i just love to say that I've partnered up with Coffee and Culture, a Genshin lore discord channel where you can chat and hang out with all sorts of people. I chill there most of the time just lurking because I don't really do discord, but they also have podcasts, events, and all sorts of stuff if you're into that kind of thing. Alright, that's it. See ya. Time to do that Inazuma video. Maybe. Hmm, I don't know. But I really think that it's impossible for there to be any substantive- <laughs>